Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, visit us at Dwyer70905 on substack.com. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao against Ugas, just some last-minute thoughts. Uh, but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm someone who believes this fight is going to be a very competitive fight. Very competitive. Understand, Ugas is a defensive wizard. Right? The idea that Manny Pacquiao is going to jump out and land some big shots on him and that he's not going to make it hard for Pacquiao to do so, I think is a reach. Quite frankly, this fight to me is more intriguing than Pacquiao against Errol Spence, where I thought Pacquiao had the advantage. Here, I'm not so sure. I also have a problem with the idea that Manny was training to fight a southpaw. Now, oh, here's a righty. Manny, make the adjustments. Oh, by the way, this righty is a world-class fighter who many people feel beat Sean Porter. Obviously, that's one of the closest fights of Porter's career. And who, of course, won Manny's ring, uh, belt, right? After Manny was inactive. Ugas is a world-class fighter. Right, so what I want people to do, and I know the casino is daring you to bet on Ugas. They're daring you. They're giving you big odds on Ugas. Right, I'll agree. That's the value side of the play. But I'm not going to bet on this fight simply because both guys didn't know they were going to fight the other until Errol Spence's detached retina. By the way, now we're hearing that the retina wasn't torn, it was detached. Right? Very serious injury. So let's just talk about what I'm going to look for in the first round. Folks, I'm going to be focused on the body shots. Understand, Ugas riddled. I mean riddled. Sean Porter's body. And Porter is shorter just like Manny Pacquiao. Right? If you're fighting a 42-year-old whose stamina is not what it was when he was in his 20s, you want proof? Folks, look at the last, let's say, half of the fight against Keith Thurman. Manny wins the fight. Right, I picked Manny in that fight. But let's just say you saw that Manny was wilting a little bit in terms of stamina. Well, if you're fighting a fast guy like Manny Pacquiao, a guy who Ugas knows he can't match in terms of hand speed, right? A guy who you know is going to cause problems for you in terms of volume and his footwork, which is excellent, right? Manny's in and out. Manny's in and out. Manny's moving all over the place. Then you need to slow him down. You need to bank body shots. Ugas is a vet. He understands, I don't care what's said before the fight, he understands that he has a better chance of landing shots to Manny's body and of building up to a KO than he does trying to land a home run punch early in this one. So I have little doubt, just based on the strategy Ugas had, in the Sean Porter fight, which paid dividends for him. Let's remember, he knocks Porter down in the 12th round. Right? They called it a slip. That's ridiculous. That was a knockdown. Had it been counted as a knockdown, that Porter fight would have been scored a draw. The exact same fight. And I'm sure many of you felt that he won that fight. Now, I'll agree. Pacquiao is better than Sean Porter, with whom he sparred with. Right? Pacquiao's more accurate. Pacquiao's more sudden. Pacquiao's less predictable. I'll agree with all of that. But you understand Pacquiao is going to try to come out and he's going to try to take advantage of the fact that he's a little unorthodox. 
and opponents aren't ready for him early. So think about some Pacquiao fights. Folks, he knocked down Shane Mosley early in their fight, didn't he? Right, Pacquiao's a guy who came out against Marquez the first time. Marquez, excellent defensively, but didn't know Pacquiao. Right, it's hard to read a southpaw who's bouncing around, who has ring coverage on that straight left. And he knocks Marquez down three times in the first round of their first fight. Right? Manny's going to try to come out and he's going to try to make his unorthodox style an issue, his hand speed an issue. But look at Ugas' age. Folks, he's in his mid-30s. This is a guy who's already a survivor in the sport. Right? At welterweight, understand, very few guys have the opportunity to continue their career at 35. Right? I know some people out there are going to say, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? Those guys are all elite fighters. Right? Ugas is a survivor. Understand, Ugas knows Pacquiao's going to jump in. I have to do two things. I have to cover my head. Right? He might be able to do this with his right hand. Right? I have to cover my head. Pacquiao's a southpaw. The shots are going to be coming from almost down the middle. I have to cover my head. And as Pacquiao enters the pocket, I have to land left hooks. He has an excellent left hook to the body. Watch the body shots. Understand, too, there's a height gap here. Pacquiao understands that Ugas is very good defensively. All you have to do is look at film to understand he's a defensive craftsman. So when you're fighting a defensive craftsman who is going to hide his head or move his head, right, whose head is hard to hit, let's remember, he goes the distance with Sean Porter. Well, when the guy's taller than you, you need to take what's offered. Manny can hit to the body. Manny's going to come inside. Manny's going to try to land his own body shots. Manny can bounce. Manny can get low. Right? If Manny comes in and Ugas is clever with the defense and the head movement, Manny's going to try to make it worth his while. Hit Ugas to the body. So I'm expecting these guys to throw a bunch of body shots. Sure, Manny's going to headhunt early. That's what Manny does. But then Manny's going to realize, oh, this dude got skills. So I believe Manny's then going to focus on the body. Ugas out the gate, in my opinion, is going to focus on the body. If Ugas lands the body shots against Pacquiao that he landed against Sean Porter, you're looking at a situation where you might have an upset in the later rounds of this fight. Right? Manny, if you're going to beat Manny, the time to do it is when he's 42 years old. This is not the Pacquiao who wilts Oscar De La Hoya. Don't get me wrong, he's still a great fighter. But Keith Thurman was able to get on his front foot in the later rounds against Manny Pacquiao, right? If Ugas lands enough solid body shots against Manny Pacquiao to the point where Pacquiao starts slowing down, I know the casino's odds don't suggest this, but this is going to be a suddenly compelling and highly competitive fight, right? So pay close attention to the body shots Right? If Ugas can make it out of the first two rounds without getting dinged in the head, and if Ugas is completely conscious, understand, folks, he's an accomplished body puncher. This is a guy who is very technical, 
He is highly skilled. He has a game prepared for episodic fighters with speed who can jump in the pocket and throw punches. He has great anticipation skills. I want folks to revisit his fight against Sean Porter. That's the fight to look at. Right? Porter jumps in. Ugas doesn't get hit in the head that much. Ugas stays in the pocket, right? One way to fail against Manny Pacquiao is to try to back up as Pacquiao comes forward. Then you're dealing with hand speed, power, timing, right? That's a disaster. Ugas is not going to make that mistake, right? I believe Ugas is going to set traps where Pacquiao comes in, Ugas rolls his head, has a shoulder in the way, has a hand up, and is working that left hook to the body. Look for the body shots. If Ugas doesn't land, Several body shots on Manny Pacquiao in the first half of this fight, then it's over. Ugas is going to lose. If Ugas is landing body shots on Manny Pacquiao, even as he's losing rounds in the first half of this fight, he has a chance. Let's remember again, he knocked down Sean Porter. Right? Manny has been down in his career. Right? The Tori Alba fight. The Marquez fourth fight. Right? Look for, we'll even name the punch, Ugas's left hook to the body. If that's landing, folks, you're going to have a compelling fight. That's how I see it. Should be a blast. I'm on the sidelines in terms of betting this fight. I was all prepared with Manny Pacquiao over Errol Spence. Then, of course, that fight didn't happen. This fight came along. Short notice. Both guys were preparing for other guys. I understand that both guys are dangerous. That Ugas is a guy who himself, just like Pacquiao, takes rounds to figure out. Ugas takes several rounds to figure out. I'm not convinced that Manny finds Ugas's head early. Right? I'll agree. Pacquiao's the bigger puncher. I'll agree. Pacquiao is the, let's say, political favorite. If it's a close fight, boxing understands, the judges inherently understand, that Pacquiao is the better storyline. I'll agree with that. Politics matters, right? No question about it. But let's just say I do see a scenario where the underdog, and he's a greater than two to one underdog, pulls off the upset. But it involves banking body shots and then being aggressive the second half of the fight. I thought Thurman made a comeback, just not a complete comeback. I believe Ugas could do better if he could avoid getting dropped like Thurman got dropped early in the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Feel free to disagree with me. Give us your thoughts on keys for this fight. To me, it's the body shots, as well as Ugas avoiding headshots early from Pacquiao. Tell us what your thoughts are in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.